Five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I intend to only speak briefly in this debate as I'm very conscious that we are going to have a large number of extremely high quality maiden speeches uh, this afternoon. And it's a very niche and particular subject that I wish to raise whilst the Secretary of State was still in her place. I feel very privileged to be called so early, following only my right honourable friend, Secretary of State, and of course the Shadow Secretary of State. And I just wanted to pick up very briefly on some of the comments that uh, particularly my right honourable friend made about the generation of clean energy. And I would urge her that when we are generating energy that is green, it must be properly green. She also spoke of new technologies, and I absolutely agree with her. There are many new technologies coming forward that will enable us to generate power in much greener ways, that will enable us to deal with waste in greener ways. But we must scrutinise them incredibly carefully to make sure that we do not make mistakes which will be around for many generations to come. I very much welcome both the Secretary of State's comments and indeed the policies included in Her Majesty's gracious speech. I particularly welcome the introduction of a landmark environment bill, the introduction of an Office of Environmental Protection, and of course the personal commitment of my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, to chair a new cabinet committee on climate change. This new environment bill is going to cement our position as a world leader on air quality, on biodiversity, and indeed on plastics reduction. I know I am correct in this because I am quoting directly from the CRD brief, something that I would commend to all new members on this side of the House. And these three points are of particular interest to us in Romsey and Southampton North. And here I come to the particular niche uh, comments that I wish to make. As honourable and right honourable members may have heard last week, I raised with my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, the fact that US company Wheelabrator is planning to build in my constituency under the national infrastructure rules a giant incinerator to burn commercial waste between the beautiful, picturesque Tess Valley villages of Long Parish and Bath and Stacey. Notionally, this will be generating energy from waste, but is in fact many miles from any connection to the national grid, and also significantly not close to uh, a demand for that energy. It is within a few miles of an area of outstanding natural beauty and the South Downs National Park. It is proposed to be twice the size of Winchester Cathedral, but of course devoid of any of the architectural merit of that building. It's going to be in excess of 40 metres high and with chimneys that are 80 metres high. It's planned to be located adjacent to the River Diva, which is well known for its fantastic fly fishing. And of course that is indeed a tributary of the River Test. It's situated right above the aquifer and will be pumping pollution into the atmosphere putting the biodiversity of this precious area at risk. So my ask of the Minister today are wholly in line with her and my aspirations for a reduction in carbon emissions, enabling us to meet our net zero target, supporting her goal of better air quality, and totally in keeping with the aim to reduce waste, including plastics. We simply cannot keep looking to incineration as a solution to landfill. It is not good enough, and it is not green enough. I turn to relatively recent history, and indeed the Shadow Secretary of State mentioned this in her comments. Her Majesty's Treasury's October 2018 budget report included the direct quote, the government wants to maximize the amount of waste sent to recycling instead of incineration and landfill. Should wider policies not deliver the government's waste ambitions in the future, it will consider the introduction of a tax on the incineration of waste in conjunction with landfill tax, taking account of the possible impacts on local authorities. And I know that my friends at Hampshire County Council would wish to emphasize that point, is that we do have to be cognizant of the needs of local authorities, but this is not a local authority project. This is a commercial venture. Mr. Speaker, this proposal is a massive venture, and I welcome the comments the Secretary of State made about businesses being held to account for their actions. This is a commercial venture which seeks to make money by putting pollutants into the atmosphere. It pays no heed to the specific qualities of this landscape and the local biodiversity. I want to put on record the determination of local residents to oppose this by whatever means necessary, especially the brilliant campaigners in, of to keep Test Valley beautiful. And I urge my, friend, my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State, to make sure that we hold to those commitments of improving air quality, reducing waste, and protecting our precious environmental diversity. Just before I bring on 